I don't want to wait till I'm 65 to enjoy life, right? I don't want to work nine to five every day until I'm 65. And then it's like, yeah, I'm retired. And I'm like old already and I can't enjoy life. You know, I want to enjoy life like now. <laughs> Hey guys, Tasha here, mom turned minimalist, and I'm back with yet another video this week. I know, there was like three videos in a row. I know, it's a lot, but please don't get used to it. It's not gonna be like that all the time. A promise is a promise though, and I said we'd have something out by October 8th for our collab, which I'll talk about a little later. I know it's October 9th, but still, it's the thought that counts. Anyway. Today, I wanted to sit down with you and tell you about a few money mistakes that I made back in my 20s that actually kind of crept into my 30s. So I guess it's basically money mistakes I made up until like two years ago. <laughs> but it all started in my 20s. Maybe it all started when I was born. So I'm 38 right now and the goal is by the time that I am 40, I will finally have been able to undo all of the damages I caused myself half a lifetime ago just by poor money habits due to lack of knowledge regardless the important thing is that we learn from our mistakes and we try our best to do better as we move forward i'm hoping that some of my experiences could possibly help you on your own journey if you are in need of some guidance you can see all the things you should not do <laughs> However, even though I am very knowledgeable about many things in the whole wide world, I regret to inform you, I am not a financial advisor. <laughs> so therefore, this is not, it's not financial advice. This is just me telling you how I messed up in the past and what I am doing better now so that I can have a brighter financial future. Also, I will share some resources, AKA books and Instagram accounts that have helped me to gain a better financial know-how. So that's the plan for tonight as I am filming this at 9.30 PM. <laughs> but yeah, if you're game, hang tight and let's grow together. All right, so we've got mistake number one, which was thinking that credit cards were free cash and that I will be able to easily pay back the debts via minimum payments <laughs> so yeah i was one of those people that never really did the math and just would pay the bare minimum but the problem was that i ended up having to pay the bare minimum on like 10 cards <laughs> you know let's say the minimum is 25 dollars, but i kind of had um one card for every single store i used to go to i had the express i had the new york and company i had the old navy and these places that i had cards for the clothing didn't even really fit right because i got long limbs and i got long legs i don't know why i was shopping at old navy i just i just shop wherever i could get cards from <laughs> anyway that's another mistake okay that's like mistake one b there was like 10 mistakes in there i had cards from multiple stores and then i also i would just buy my clothes at these stores even if their clothing was subpar for my needs like so imagine i have 25 dollars minimum payment on like 10 cards that's like 250 dollars a month already right just paying the bare minimum and then i can't even talk about the interest that builds up over time it's too easy to spend money that isn't physically in your hands right especially if you are in a mood. Most of this debt buildup happened during my college years as my prefrontal cortex was not fully developed yet and I was not able to properly cope with the emotional dramas of my youth. The only way I figured I could cope was by spending money that I didn't have using these colorful little plastics. Luckily though, I was able to consolidate my debt before I got married and get it under control and pay it off but it doesn't mean that i learned my lesson once i got married they were giving us bigger credit limits because there was like two incomes now oh no i didn't have a job yet so it was just one income but he was my sugar daddy <laughs> just kidding i'm just kidding but anyway yeah so we just got more money to spend that we didn't even make yet it was amazing just for the past five years okay and like we were better about our money these past five years sort of it's just random vacations would pop up here and there but okay anyway just adding up all the credit card debt payments that i have been make that i've made over the past five years just just as an example 
I mean, mind you, some of it was for essential stuff like groceries and, and some bills. But I mean, usually when you're using a card, you overspend on that too. I'm basically going to say that out of that credit card, that probably 50% was Target and Amazon. <laughs> it was it was just things we didn't need, you know, just like all the latest gadgets and stuff. It was, yeah, it was probably 50% of that, okay? Added it all up, all my credit card debt payments. 100K. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. It's like 20K a year. 20k a year so like if instead we had taken that 20k a year and invested it in the stock market over the past five years with an annual average return of 10 percent per year then after those five years we would have had a hundred twenty nine thousand dollars okay so that's like twenty nine thousand dollars just from compound interest yeah, not understanding credit cards and minimum payments was a big mistake. By the way, this video is a part of a mistakes and growth collaboration with some amazing content creators. So I hope that after you finish this video, because you're going to finish it, right? You're not going to leave me hanging, right? After you finish it, please do check out the other videos in the playlist. The link will be in the description and also at the end of this video. All right, guys, let's move on to mistake number two, buying new cars. Now, I mean, everyone has their opinions on buying new versus used. And right now in this market, used cars are severely like overpriced. So that's a whole other thing. That's beyond the scope of this video because I really don't care. <laughs> I'm not like I said, this is just my personal experiences. OK, but having bought two new cars, I'm not going to do it again. That's just what works for me, okay? You probably hear it all the time. The moment you drive off of the lot, your car depreciates like a few K. And now financing goes for like up to like, what, six or seven years if you want so that you can get that sweet monthly payment that you're looking at. I don't want to spend over $400 a month for this car. So I'm going to finance it for 10 years. <laughs> monthly payments that's where the, that's where the people get you you know but basically when i went to trade in my nissan rogue that i had bought new back in 2011 i went to trade it back in in 2014 so that i could get a, a van because our family was growing when i went to trade it back in i owed 17 grand on the vehicle still but the trade-in value was 13 grand so basically I was in the hole four grand and I needed to tack that four grand onto my new loan for my van, which was used that the van was our first used uh, vehicle. And ever since then, we've only bought used vehicles. But yeah, I had to tack it onto my next loan. And I was like, this isn't cool. That just really made me rethink, you know, like buying new new versus used or whatever. But basically that's going to lead me to mistake number three. Oh. <laughs> All right, you know what? It's 10 o'clock at night, guys. It's 10 o'clock at night. And I'm still picking out the content. <laughs> Honestly, though, it's important to talk about these things. Like, I feel like money is a, such a taboo subject. But if someone had talked to me about it when I was younger, oh my goodness, I would have avoided so many mistakes. I only knew what I saw, you know? And if the people that I'm watching also don't have that money knowledge or education, because they didn't learn too, then it's basically this cycle that moves from generation to generation of nobody knowing how to best utilize money and just, you know, trying to keep up with the Joneses and stuff and not knowing about investments and, and having assets and everything. Like, we got to stop that. We got to just be um, open about it and be like, hey, this is what this is where I messed up, but I don't want you to make the same mistakes. Right. Anyway. But what was I even talking? Okay, mistake number three is financing a car. This is just my personal experience. I haven't had a car payment in four years and it has made the world of a difference. Having to make monthly payments takes away from the money that you could be investing long term. That money doesn't have a chance to grow, you know, over the years because you're putting it towards consistently making monthly payments. 
I mean, if you have a lot, you know, to invest already and you decide you want to still finance a car, more power to you. You can you can do both. I'm just saying that for me, like we just never were able to save. Like I know people that could save, but we weren't one of them. Like we always just had enough. We were just always paycheck to paycheck, but getting rid of our car debt saved us a lot of interest over the course of the loan, right? And then on top of that, we just had money to save each month or that we could spend frivolously on other things because we still didn't have our act quite together until a year ago. But yeah, at least not having car payments for four years, that did help us have some more wiggle room, a little more breathing room, okay? But we still had to complete our transformation <laughs> from bad handlers of money to, to good handlers of money or people that are getting their money to make money. And it wasn't until we figured out investments or the power of compound interest. It's not until we figured that out that we were like, oh, rather than buying all this stuff right now, we could be buying stocks and, and bonds or whatever that can grow for many years. And instead of like buying liabilities, cars and whatever that decrease in value over time, we could have assets that would increase in value over time. And that that was like a mindset shift, the paradigm shift. And it's still kind of ongoing. You know, we're still pretty new to it. However, what was my point? I got I got sidetracked a lot. This whole video. But the the most important factor in investing is time. So let's say the average car payment's like five hundred a month, right? and you usually buy you usually have a loan for five years a lot of people usually they get tired of a car after five years and then they go trade it in and get another car and continue to pay five hundred dollars a month okay let's just say this happens for like 30 years right they go through like six cars a car every five years something like that let's just say so the whole time they're paying five hundred dollars a month right what if instead you took that five hundred dollars a month that you were paying, you know, for for these cars, but instead, let's say that you just purchase a used car every every few years, cash, right? You save up for it. It's a used car. It's reasonable, whatever. But you're able to also invest the five hundred dollars for thirty years. If you invested it in low cost index funds over the course of thirty years, you'd end up with one point one three million. I guess you can consider this the opportunity cost of financing a car, right? Like, yeah, you get to drive a nice car, but where are you in 30 years? Like you only had to put a total of $180,000 over those 30 years, but it compounded up to $1.13 million. That's like amazing, no? So then imagine too, if you started investing at like age 20, right? If at age 20, you were able to, you know, you live with your parents still or whatever, you're able to, to put $500 a month starting at age 20. Then by 50, you've got, you're already a millionaire, but it even gets better. Say you get a higher paying job and then you start contributing a thousand, you know, by the time you're like 25 or 30. We're, it's, it's just crazy thinking about it. But my point is I don't plan on financing vehicles moving forward. I'm happy having that extra cash flow to put into random other things. <laughs> um, and I don't want to use my my monthly labors, <laughs> my monthly labors. You do your math, right? That's like however many hours that you're working just to pay for your car. I don't know. You get, I don't know. I'm just I'm not about that life anymore. Anyway, this is just my personal choice. And everyone's situation is different. You know, I just know that A, I don't need a new car and B, I don't, I don't want a monthly car payment. I'm going to link some great resources, both for buying used cars and for investing in low cost index funds. Some are books. Most are Instagram accounts that have just been so inspiring. There is like so much free knowledge out there. Obviously, you have to be careful, you know, of your sources, but I can personally attest that these um, Instagram accounts I've been following, I mean, it, it's been life changing. We are in so much of a better financial situation than we were just a year ago. And that's by learning how to invest. Yeah, that really was the game changer. Because like I've mentioned in my other videos, like, you know, before I used to just always be on the Amazon, buying on Amazon, but now 
I have Amazon stock. Now I have Apple stock. I have Costco stock. I have stock at all the places that I usually, you know, that I used to consume, consume ferociously from, right? I'm not obsessed with money. It may sound like I am, but I'm not. Like before I was worried about money. I always felt like we we had enough, but it was just enough. You don't have to work until you're 65. That was just some arbitrary number that someone came up with like however many decades ago. I don't want to wait till I'm 65 to enjoy life, right? I don't want to work nine to five every day until I'm 65 and then it's like, yeah, I'm retired and I'm like old already and I can't enjoy life, you know? I want to enjoy life like now. <laughs> Social media, when used properly, can teach you so much. So yeah, use it as a resource rather than as a way to zap your energy. <laughs> Don't be jealous of everyone's highlight reel. Make your real life shine as bright as the sun. You saw what I did there? But what about you? What money mistakes have you made that you don't mind sharing in public? <laughs> I'd love to know that I am not the only one, but you know, it's okay. You don't have to sh necessarily share. At least say hi in the comments, all right? And I will see you next time. High five.